Welcome to the Harper Classroom, a series of instructional videos. This video is on aggregate planning, inventory objectives with Excel. The agenda for this video is to increase or decrease the ending annual inventory relative to the beginning annual inventory. This will be done with level capacity and chase demand strategies. We are given the quarterly demand, the beginning inventory, 7,020 for quarter one, and the production standard. 117 items per quarter. So let's bring in Excel. So I've typed in the demand and the beginning inventory is 7020 and I've typed in the headings and so let's start with level capacity. Let's set up the table. Uh, let's sum the quarterly demand to get the annual demand and a description of a level capacity production plan for each quarter is going to be the annual demand divided by four and then we copy that down our production standard was given to be 117 per quarter and we copy that down our FTEs will equal our production plan divided by our production standard and we copy those down our ending inventory equals our beginning inventory plus production plan minus our demand and we copy that down. The ending inventory for quarter one is the beginning inventory for quarter two and then we copy that down. Now I can drag the sum across to get the annual production, the annual production standard, and the annual total quarterly FTEs. I can also take the annual average inventory by averaging all eight numbers to be safe. And so there's our level capacity table. Now let's assume we have an objective where we want to increase our ending inventory by 936 to a total of 7956. So right now we're at 7020. We want to increase that to 7956. We can look at this either by production or capacity. For production, we can increase the annual production by 936 or divide that by 4 and increase our quarterly production by 234. For capacity, we can increase our quarterly FTEs by 936 over 117 equals 8 quarterly FTEs annually or divide that by 4 to get 2 quarterly FTEs every quarter. So if I increase the 2 quarter, quarterly FTEs every quarter, this 106 will go to 108. If I increase every quarter production by 234, this will increase by 234. So let's do that. Let's come up here and add 234, and there it is. So now we have 234 every quarter. So the annual production is 936 more than our annual demand. And our quarterly FTEs is 108 instead of 106. And so we've achieved our ending annual inventory of 7956 as desired. One purpose of the objective of increasing your annual inventory is to create anticipation inventory for expected increase in demand the next year. And that demand could be known, expected, or speculative. This can be done through aggregate planning with inventory objectives. This also illustrates the amount of control level capacity has over the inventory. Even though inventory is dependent on the variability in the demand, level capacity aggregate planning strategies can still achieve inventory objectives. But that level of control is greater with Chase Demand. So let's go to Chase Demand. So for Chase Demand, I've copied over the functions from my level plan. And for Chase Demand, we have an objective of decreasing our ending annual inventory by 936 to 6,084. So for production, I can decrease my production plan by 936 annually or divide that by 4 and decrease it by 234 quarterly. For capacity, I can decrease my quarterly FTEs by 936 divided by 117, which is my quarterly production standard, to 8 annually. Or divide that 8 quarterly FTEs by 4 and I can decrease my capacity by 2 quarterly. So for chase demand, I can let my production in the first quarter equal my demand and subtract the 234 and then copy that down and there's my production and my 
FTEs have been decreased by two every quarter. And my ending annual inventory, 6,084, is my objective that I wanted to achieve. Now we can see the amount of influence Chase Demand has on the inventory. Because for Chase Demand, the inventory is independent of the variability in the demand, so Chase Demand has much more control over the inventory. Well, the better our production can meet our demand, or the better our forecast is so that we, our production can meet demand, the less we need our inventory. So theoretically, I can keep incre decreasing my inventory to zero. But if I decrease my inventory to zero and keep it at zero, this is really moving from a make-to-stock operation to a make-to-order operation, from a push system to a pull system. To illustrate how to do this, let me go to the first quarter here, and instead of subtracting 234, let's go ahead and subtract 7020 divided by 4. That way, we will reduce that all the way to zero. So even though we may not want to do this, this just illustrates that we have control over our inventory. And as we want to decrease our inventory for a number of reasons, to move to a pull system, to move to a JIT manufacturing system, or even as inventory costs increase, we can decrease our inventory to offset that cost. For Chase Demand, we have the ability to achieve many different objectives within aggregate planning. But the application of aggregate planning depends on the company, the situation, the objectives. So I welcome people to bring me problems to apply aggregate planning because it's as much an art as it is a science. But when done properly, aggregate planning can be very powerful and very effective. So this ends the video Aggregate Planning Inventory Objectives with Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.